We're looking at the worksheet called Partial 4, and what we're seeing on the screen represents what we saw at the completion of the previous movie. We used the do loop structure to move through the list, copying and pasting information off to the right. And this was done for all the records entirely through the list. I'll double click the bottom edge of the active cell, wherever it might be over in column B. We go down to the bottom, we see how this has happened for all the records. Now, we're not finished with what we ultimately want to do because a list like we're seeing over here is not very useful. We want to get rid of the empty rows within columns D through I here. Now, there are two broad approaches we could take. One of these is a bit unusual. I do want to explain it to you, but probably not the best approach to use in a macro like this. Here's a thought. If we select the data that we see right here, remember this is how the data looked at the end of the previous movie, we need those rows to come together. We'd like to delete the empty rows within the data there and simply pull all the data together. If we use a technique for deleting the empty rows here, it will have the advantage of the records will be in the same order as we see them over in column B. And that could be important. Let's say in this list, maybe it's not obvious as to what order they're in, but maybe they're in an order that you want to preserve. That's one approach. A second approach says, let's just highlight the data and sort this based on what we see in column D to come up with an alphabetized list. And I think that's the approach most people would take. Let me show you the first approach that we might take if we simply wanted to keep the data in the same order. And now I'm not recording this right now, but we certainly could be recording this in the macro. Select these columns, and then on the Home tab, go to Find and Select, and then choose Go to Special. I'm going to choose Blanks, and then OK. And you might wonder, since I did select the entire columns, did this select blanks below the data as well? I'm going to slide toward the bottom of the list here. What are we seeing below row 2400? It didn't highlight the cells down there. It's not exactly predictable, but that's fortunate for us because the next step we could take, and remember, this all could be recorded, we could right-click on any of the highlighted cells here and choose Delete and Shift Cells Up. And we see the data looking like that, and the task is done. Obviously, we're going to put labels on top and so on. But this is one approach. And the advantage to it is it keeps the data in the same order if that happens to be important. But I think it's more likely that most people would want to sort the data. So let's say we will not take this step. I'm going to press Control-Z. Now, the earlier macro that was recorded went through the data, copied, pasted, and transposed the data. And at its completion, it ended up down here. So after highlighting these six cells and copying and pasting, transposing, and so on, the data went over here, and then the macro came down and highlighted the next six cells. And at that point, based on the structure that was used, Excel sensed the active cell was empty and it stopped. Now, the reason this is important is if you're recording a macro in stages, you want to be sure that you recognize where the previous macro ended. So this would have been the look of the screen at the end of the previous macro. What we now want to do is to record a macro that's going to sort the data. The other approach that I described is certainly less commonly needed. We won't use that. So what will be the first step in the new macro that we will be recording that ultimately will join with the previous macro? We'll simply be selecting the data from columns D through I so we can sort it. So in this example here, we don't need to worry about where the previous macro left off, because our next step, right now in a new macro, but eventually to be joined with the other macro, is simply to select columns D through I. So let's slide to the top. We're about to record a new macro. Now, when you open a workbook that already has macros in it, and then you record a new macro, it will go into a different module. And let's say as we record this macro, the new one, we want to be able to see the macro code. So as we have done in some prior movies, let's first record an empty macro. As I jump into Alt F11, let's take a look at the code that was recorded. This is the macro code that has been used already. It has copied and pasted and transposed the data. It's gone through the entire list. If we record a new macro right now, it's going to go into Module 2. Let's first set that up. Let's jump back into Excel. I'm going to record a dummy macro here that does nothing. Developer tab certainly is one way. Off to the left, record macro. We don't care what the name is. Make sure it's stored in this workbook. 
click OK, and then immediately let's stop recording. Upper left corner, we can use it on the Developer tab, or lower left corner next to the word Ready, click that box. So we have an empty macro. Let's jump into Visual Basic again with Alt F11. It's in Module 2. I'm going to double-click Module 2 over on the VBA Project window. Here's the macro. We don't care about it. Let's get rid of it. And once again, the reason we did this was to set up Module 2 because now as we record this new macro, it will go into this module. Resize the screens on either side. So what's ahead of us in terms of tasks? As we look at Excel, just for the moment here, we want to sort the data from columns D through I. And once it is sorted, let's say alphabetically based on the data in column D, then we will want to insert new cells above the list and then copy the title-like information from cells A1 to A6, copy and transpose it to put it above the list. And then we'll make some column width adjustments and alignment adjustments, and we'll be all done. Now, this will go into a new macro, and we are recording this as a separate macro. Eventually, we'll join it with the other macro. So in order to see the code, let's have that portion of the screen visible, as well as the data down here. Now, so that we don't have to do scrolling, and that's not a, a negative exactly, but we don't want that code to be visible, I'm going to make column C a bit narrower in the worksheet. I want to be able to see columns D through I. I'll make column B a bit narrower too. This is not exactly necessary, but it will make what we're doing more visible. So the active cell is anywhere within the data. It is important to remember where the active cell was when the previous macro ended because we're going to be joining the macros, but we can click anywhere here because our first step will be to select columns D through I. And we do want to make sure that absolute references are in effect. On the Developer tab, take a look at the Use Relative References button. If the option does not have a gray background, it is not active. Therefore, absolute references are in effect. So we're about ready to record the new macro. We will see the code at the top of our screen. So on the Developer tab, we can start here. Off to the left, Record Macro. We don't need to give it a name. We want to make sure it's in this workbook. Let's click OK. And there's the macro code already sitting above. Now, first step, we will highlight columns D through I. Look at the code. I think that makes sense based on what we did. We are now going to sort the data. Because the active cell is at D1, we can go to the Data tab and simply click the simple AZ button. The data has been sorted. We can see only a portion of it, but you can see how it's alphabetized. Next order of business is, we need to get those titles in there. So I want to explicitly highlight cells D1 through I1. Watch the code. Range D1 colon I1. Now I want to push that data downward. So right-clicking within the highlighted data, insert, shift cells down. See what's happening. And now I want to go over to column A and highlight those first six cells that contain that information right there. And as I'm doing this too, I might want to do it a little bit more carefully because eventually I do want to copy here. So I might have to do some scrolling here and we'll see that in the code, but I've highlighted this data. Let me right click within it and copy. And now I'm going to right click on cell D1. And then from there, paste special transpose. So we've got our titles in place, but ideally they should be left aligned. So on the Home tab in the ribbon, let's choose Left Alignment. And this will generate a lot more code than you would expect. By the way, we just did the Paste Special Transpose. You do see that code up there. But as I choose Left Alignment, a lot of code appears. We'll clean that up in a bit. So that's looking good. Let's now adjust the column widths for D through I. Drag across the column letters here. And we need only double click any column boundary between any of those columns, double click. And although not required, it's more or less a convention to say, let's not have the macro end with a bunch of highlighted cells. So I'll simply click cell D1 and we're done. Stop recording, lower left corner, next to the word ready. It's it. Let's look at the code. I'll expand it a bit. This is a separate macro. Ultimately, we will be joining it with the other macro. And although we don't have to do all the cleanup just yet, I'm going to make a note here. In this portion of the code right here, all we really care about is left alignment. So 
I'm going to get rid of this code right here, highlight all that, press delete. I could leave it in this state or make it even more compact. For now, I'll leave it this way. We can make some other adjustments along the way too. We can get rid of these lines here, delete. I'll click here and press backspace just to make it a bit more visible. Again, we can make some more changes for the moment. We don't worry about it. The sorting activity occurs right here, here too. It's not important to necessarily understand every line, but as you look at this, I think you can remind yourself what we did. We selected the list. We did some sorting here. We see the range that was being sorted. And a bit later, we'll come back and show you how we might want to make some changes here too as we streamline the code, make it look a, a bit more readable and also more efficient. When you do see specific addresses and sorting, sometimes you might want to make some changes so that in the future, if we deal with data of a different length, we might want this to be more applicable. Right now, this only works down to row 2401. So a bit later, we'll make some changes there. So we've recorded a separate macro here. And in the next movie, we'll show you how to put macros together. And then after that, show you how to make this even more efficient by streamlining the code.